Now, to be completely honest, I was never one of those people that are materialistic. And you've seen that from my past videos. I'm literally sitting in a basement, my own basement, and I'm just talking about whatever thing that I feel like is right. And the room, the entire room looks horrible. If you just go back to my older videos, the room looks horrible. It's always a mess. My mom always tells me, it's like, Habibi, just please clean the room at least. And just it just goes to show you, right? Like, I'm not a materialistic person. So right now, I am in Dubai, right? And what I noticed is that it's almost like everybody here is so materialistic. And it's all, if you think about it, it's all just a rat race. All of it is just a rat race. So in this video, I want to tell you, it's like, how can you like still be in this rat race, but not become a rat? So there's five things that a lot of you guys are doing that are keeping you broke. And those things are haram. But it's for some reason that you guys are just like, you think it's okay to do. And if you watch this whole video, I'll tell you exactly like how to do things in your own life that are not basically to increase your wealth, to increase the sustenance that Allah is giving you. But I started off saying that everything is materialistic because you have to realize like everything, all, every, everybody is just in a rat race, right? And what I noticed is that the best way, like even I'm in the rat race, but the best way to gain the most out of this rat race is to be in it, but be outside of it at the same time. As I said, I'm in Dubai and everything I'm seeing is all materialistic. All of it is materialistic. But if you're in it, and at the same time you're outside of it, that's when you'll gain the most of it. To the point that every single rat around you, they're going to be looking at you. They're going to be like, how is this How is this freaking rat right here so much better than everybody else? How is that possible? And the only reason why it's possible is because, first of all, you're avoiding all the sins that these other rats are doing. Because once again, when you are in the rat race, haram and halal is going to become non-existent for you. You're going to stop thinking about that. And so while you're in this rat race, avoid these five things. And the first, the first thing that you have to avoid, bro, and this is like, there's so many videos on this and even like my own videos talking about this. It's to stop watching porn. But not just stop watching porn, but like even when you're walking around, when you're walking around and you see like people that are dressed immodestly, like lower your gaze. Because porn is not just the thing that you see on the phone and that's just it. Or, or the website, and that's just it. That's not just it. There's police outside. By the way, I am actually outside right now. Not outside, but like I'm in a I'm in a terrace. And I, I told you, like everything is materialistic, right? Even me right now. <laughs> but like if you hear some stuff outside, just, just so you know, it's because I am outside. But anyway, like when you are seeing people dressed up immodestly, and in Dubai, there is a lot of people that are dressed up immodestly, just don't look at it, bro. Don't look at it. Just... Imagine like you as a man, you're walking around and I have friends that actually do that. You're walking around and it's like you're you're with them, you're standing with them, but their mind is not with you. Their mind is just like, it's like, bro, like wake up from the sleep. What are you doing? It's like they're in a dream and they're just looking at every single thing they see around them. Habibi, stop looking at things. Lower your gaze. That's why Allah says like for the, for the men, lower your gaze. Because it's something that like obviously it's hard to do, but it's hard because once you do it, you get so much reward out of it. And this is one thing that's actually keeping you broke, man. This is a big thing that's keeping you broke. Because think about it too. When you are looking at a bunch of things, you're giving your energy to those things. And by the way, like when you are looking at women, just so you know, like you're giving them the attention. And the most valuable thing for a man is the attention. So when you're looking at all these things outside of you that are walking around, <laughs> you're giving it your energy. And so when you're giving it your energy, energy, again, it can be destroyed or created you're losing your energy and that's why most of you guys are tired that's why most of you guys are tired because you're you can't stop your eyes from looking at bad things and once again it's not just about like your phone it's not just about the phone you can walk around and you're still watching porn just so you know so once you walk around and you put your eyes down first of all you'll notice that this energy will still be within you you'll still have energy even like by the way even your libido just so you know just even even your libido like when you go in the like if you're married when you go in like the bedroom and stuff you'll notice that dang bro like i actually have a lot of energy because you didn't waste it you didn't waste it so it's not just about the risk and by the way there's there's a big correlation between like your sexual energy and like the amount of wealth that you have so if you do have strong sexual energy you'll have lots of wealth which basically means if you have a high amount of testosterone you'll have 
good amount of wealth. This is true. Because one, when you do have testosterone, obviously it's like, I always say it's like if, I'm shaking the screen. But listen, if a man, if testosterone was fuel, then man is the cart. Do you get it? Or the opposite. But you understand, right? So testosterone is the fuel for the man. And when you're losing it, it's just basically energy, bro. When you're losing it, by looking at things, how are you going to have this energy to put it in your work? How are you going to have this energy to, to even make videos with it, man? To, to create things with it. When you don't have this energy, you can't create things with it. So that's the first thing. That's the first thing. And Habibi, like, you look at even someone like Andrew Tate. Like, yeah, you, you'll tell me it's like Andrew Tate used to do all this, this, and that. But he's not the type of guy that would be walking around just looking at things. Just so you know. This guy does not sit down and watch porn. Sure, he's done, like, haram things, obviously, back when he wasn't Muslim. But, like, he wouldn't just go into a mall and just start staring at every, every human that's walking around. That's not what he would do. And you'll notice every rich person, they don't do that. And the ones that do that, they're always broke. I've had friends that do that, man. And they're all they're always broke, though. Like, they're actually always broke. They can never make money because they're they're wasting all their energy. And so this obviously connects to like even like when you're doing this whole thing about semen retention and stuff. This whole thing about semen retention. Because think about it. It's like a dam, right? A dam. So when a dam is holding this water, there's so much potential energy within that dam. As soon as the dam goes away, that potential energy gets converted to kinetic energy, which basically means it's moving. It's moving. And that's how like the energy within the water, it becomes very strong when the once the water is moving. Same thing with you. When you are like not looking at the bad things and you're preventing yourself from shooting, <laughs> you'll see that you actually have so much energy within you. And then you can use that energy to create things with it. And Habibi, I don't like even even the the ancient Egyptians. That, that's what they used to do. They used to use this energy, this powerful energy like this testosterone, to create things with it, because they, they they didn't waste it back in the day. So, this is the first haram thing that a lot of you guys are doing, and it's not just like watching porn on your phone. It's just when you are walking around, even on the in the mall, on the beach, anywhere. When you are walking around and you can't stop your eyes from seeing things, when you can't control your eyes. You lose all your energy, and you'll have you'll have no energy left to do the work that you're supposed to be doing to make money. So that's the first thing. Now, the other thing too is that you see Ramadan is coming. By the way, Ramadan is very like it's so close. And so, if you look at you know how uh, I think it was John Rockefeller or whoever it was, who was that Rockefeller guy that just recently died? I'm pretty sure you know about him, right? But if you look at this guy, I'm shaking the screen again. But if you look at this Rockefeller guy that just recently died, and this is one thing that a lot of you guys that are doing this haram. But if you look at this guy. This guy was not a heavy eater, just so you know. You look at him, you look at everybody else that's like a billionaire. These people are not heavy eaters. I actually heard this guy, he used to wake up and he would just eat like bread and milk. And then for, in the evening, he would just eat like a bag of apples and that's it. And then you look, you look at these people and they're, they're billionaires, bro. Billionaires. And they're not heavy eaters. So there is a strong correlation between eating heavy, eating a lot, and also being broke. Eating a lot and being broke. So if you're always, man... Especially because Ramadan is coming and a lot of you guys, whenever Ramadan comes, you're fasting, right? That's amazing, you're fasting. But as soon as iftar comes, you're supposed to eat, you fill your stomach up so much. You're so abusive on your stomach, man. And so once you, once the iftar comes and you're fasting and then you eat lightly and you eat one ingredient, one ingredient's foods too, by the way. But then you eat lightly, fruits, a little bit of protein and that's it. That's when you'll notice it's like, there's so much barakah in it because there's actually energy in it. You know, back in the day. So, uh, look, look, look. So, I'm, I've been, I tried to gain weight, right? Because back in the day, I used to be so skinny. So skinny, bro. But I just recently, like three years ago, I tried to gain weight. And so, alhamdulillah, I actually did gain some weight. But back when I was skinny, like, I would wake up in the morning. And that's when I was trying to build my, own, my online business, like with dropshipping and everything. I would wake up in the morning. And then the first thing I would do is that I would make this smoothie right i would basically put peanut butter in it i would put milk in it oats whey protein i don't even know bro like greek yogurt and stuff like that so much stuff that i heard helps you gain weight i would drink it as soon as i wake up in the morning i gained weight which is amazing but then every single morning i hear people look bro there's birds i don't you can see them right there's birds but anyway <laughs> i'm like getting excited about birds so anyway so I'd wake up in the morning and I would drink this. 
and bro, I would have no energy left for working at all. And so I'm like, I'm like, Habibi, what is the issue? I would even put like olive oils inside of it because I'm trying to increase the calories. And I've done that for a little bit, which is fine because I did gain the weight that I want. But I'd have no energy left to do work. No energy. I would wake up and I would be so refreshed. And I'm like, bro, I'm so sleepy all of a sudden again. Even with coffee. So if you look at it, it's like when Ramadan is coming right now and all of, you guys, all of you guys are just stuffing your mouth with food, you will gain no blessings from the Ramadan. You will gain no blessings from the food that you're eating. And this is a haram thing to do. This is the second thing that a lot of people are doing that's haram. And it's that when you're eating, you're eating a lot. Stop eating a lot, man. You can actually... I honestly noticed that even when you, when you don't eat a lot, if you're eating, eating food that's like... It has butter, which is good because butter is healthy. It has good quality protein like meat it has like like fruits and all that stuff if you're eating those things or even like honey for example don't even worry about like all oh, like drinking like low calorie foods and stuff like that like drinks but if you're just eating things that have butter in it basically the sunnah diet right when you're eating all those things first of all you're not going to be feeling as full but second of all it's like you're still eating you're still maintaining the body that you have like the energy and the muscle and all that stuff but you're not overstuffing your mouth and you're still getting the barakah and you're not getting tired. That's what you need to be doing. So what I would do is that, once again, I told you, it's like meat, bro. Just eat a lot of meat, but not to, to the point where you can't even get up. Like just eat as soon as you're full, that's it. Just leave the, like, leave the, leave the table. Put the freaking fork down, man. That's it. In terms of like rice, bread, it's all good. Just do it. But at the same time, like, you know better than me, bro. Just the whole point is that stop overstuffing your mouth with a bunch of things. That there is no bark in that. You lose all the energy. And that's actually something haram to do. When you're filling your stomach a lot, that's something haram to do. And I know even when you go to like, for example, when you go to like a dinner where, where someone invites you, they're always gonna be like, here, bro, eat more, eat more, and they feed you a lot more. If you're one of those people, have you been stop it? That pisses me off so much. It's like I don't even know how to say no to them. Because I feel so bad. But just <laughs> If you're one of those people, don't do it, bro. If I come to your house and you're like, eat, bro, eat. Please, bro, please, don't, don't do it too much. But this is the second thing. Just don't overstuff your mouth with a lot of things. Because that, trust me, bro, that is keeping you broke. Also, if you think about it, right? If you look at a whale, a whale. I actually heard that whales don't eat a lot. And the whale is so much bigger than you. So if you're still trying to gain weight, why is the whale way bigger than you and it's not eating as much as you you're eating more than a whale bro <laughs> you're actually eating more than a whale i'm shaking the screen again so if a whale is still getting it's still gaining weight and it's maintaining its big weight what makes you think that you are not going to be gaining weight and don't tell me things about no but bro calories in calories out and stuff eat butter bro butter is, it has so much calories and it's not like it's not huge so eat it it's not going to fill you up a lot and then when you eat it you'll notice that you actually gain proper amount of weight if you if like you're you're lacking weight or like coconut oil and all that stuff, just don't overstuff your mouth, man. Again, if you're thinking it's like no, but I have to eat more, think of a whale. Think of a whale. That's it. Whale. Now the third thing is that I don't know why. So I'm in Dubai, right? Just so you know. I don't know why they do this, bro. But the masjids, the mosques, they open. I'm talking quietly, because what if the government is hearing right now, right? So the masjids, the mosques, they open it for prayer. Not a lot of people attend, but whatever. Jum'a, there's a lot of people, but like normal prayers, not a lot of people attend. But then they close it as soon as the prayer is done. So it's like, if you if you go, and it's like, the prayer is still, obviously you can still pray it, but they finished, and you want to go pray, the masjid is closed. It's locked. It's literally locked. And I don't know why that is. I don't know why that is, bro. But the third thing that is haram, and a lot of you guys do, but it's keeping you broke, is that when you're neglecting your prayers, man, when you're neglecting your salah. Bro, I made such a good video. I mean, <laughs> I shouldn't be saying that, right? But I made such a good video on how to pray properly. And that video actually helped a lot of people, bro. And even me. Like, I, I still review the things that I talked about in that video. Because that video was, was so helpful, bro. Because a lot of you guys, when, when you're looking at the salah, you're looking at it like it's, it's just something that you have to do. And it's just physical and there's no, there's no point in it. It's just basically, stop shaking the screen. Basically, it's just something that you do to help your afterlife and that's it. But then when you look about it, when you look at it properly, you'll see that salah, it doesn't just only help your afterlife. It's going to help you a lot in this life too. There's something, there's an ayah. Basically it says, Basically all that it means 
is that like command your family to pray and you obviously and then be patient with it so even if they say no stuff like that be patient with it obviously right and then and in the same ayah Allah's telling you we don't ask you for provision we don't ask you for money we don't ask you to provide and all that stuff we are the ones that provide for you we are the ones that give you the risk that's what this ayah is saying in the same the same ayah that Allah is talking about salah Allah is also saying that we're the ones that provide you your sustenance your money the the things that keep you alive the things that keep you living so if Allah is saying that in the same ayah bro I mean I don't want to sound like a sheikh and all that stuff right but if Allah is saying that in the same ayah doesn't that also mean like there's a correlation between salah and also your risk and by the way listen don't come here and tell me that Habibi, but you know a lot of people are doing only fans and not, they're making very good money they have more money than me and i'm here doing all my salah and all that stuff think of it this way right i've actually i've seen those people that do the only fans event i've seen them and then when you look at them yeah their bank like their bank accounts is big right but then when you look at them there's there's almost like there's almost like no happiness on them bro you look at these people and you just you don't want to be around them you literally don't want to be around them and by the way i came from the war room just so you know I've been in the war room from Andrew Tate, and there was a lot of people in that war room that do OnlyFans back when I was in it. I don't know what's happening right now in it because I'm not in it anymore. It's been it's been like a year that I'm not even in it, or two years. I don't even know. A year. But then you look at those people that do the OnlyFans, they're the worst people you could meet, man. These people, like, sure, they have work ethics and stuff like that, but they're the worst people that you could meet. And it's so funny, Allah is not saying here that we'll give you mal, we'll give you just money. Allah is saying risk. Risk is more than just money. Risk is not just money. It's the things that are keeping you alive. So it's not just money. So even like your spouse, for example, your spouse is is risk. It's provision. So it's not just money. That's why it's like when you look at them and you're like, oh, they're not praying and stuff. Sure, they have mal. But when you're going to start praying, you're going to have something that's more than mal. Mal is money, by the way. So you'll have something more than just money. And you'll see it, man. Try to make money. Try try and go and make money right now in, in a... Not even in an illegal way, but in a haram way. See how that makes you feel. And I know a guy on Twitter who, who used to actually promote OnlyFans and stuff, like teaching people how to make money with OnlyFans. And he's he's done pretty well with it. But he's like, bro, like, I'm not doing this anymore at all. Like, this life is not... Like, just doing this, it's literally, like, it's not good for the sanity. I'm not doing this anymore. The money is good, but screw this, bro. I'm not doing this anymore. And you, you'll see that. Try and go do it. Just try and go and do it and see how that makes you feel. See how see how it's going to turn your life into the worst life you can ever live. So when you are praying your salah, and I made a whole video on how to do it properly, not like just like, not like the, the basics, by the way. It's not just the basics. It's how to do it properly. Not basics, but properly in a way where it does give you the things that you want. In a way, bro, where it does give you like the risk that you want. And that's beautiful. And if you're neglecting that, and you're a Muslim especially, you're maybe even if you go and you try to do stuff, you, you you'll never gain, you'll never gain the true happiness even with the money. And that's the worst state to be in, by the way. You'd you'd rather be broke, but you're still like, you're still happy, than money, and unhappy. And you know what I mean, like you know what I mean. Don't tell me it's like no, but Grant Cardone says that I'd rather be unhappy and still have money. He's talking about something else, by the way. I'm talking about something else too. So now because Allah himself has given you a promise that when you do the salah, you're, you'll basically get lots of risk. You don't need me to come and tell that to you. Allah said it. And there's no more, there's no need for me to even give you more points on the benefits and like the, the why that is. Just go and do it and that's it. Now the fourth thing that's blocking your risk or keeping you broke basically, it's that, you know, Allah says in the Quran, the, the relationships of the womb, you have to keep it alive. The relationships of the womb, you have to keep it alive, which basically means your relationship with your mama, with your baba, with your sister, with your brother. Habibi, if you're breaking these relationships, because a lot of people here in the West, I'm not in the West, just so you know, not I'm not in Canada anymore. Although I'm gonna go back at some point, obviously. But like in the Arab countries, like families are still there. You can see a lot of families here, which is beautiful. But when you go back to the West, as soon as the person becomes 18 immediately they're kicked out they're like go live your own life now now i get that like yeah that's that's hopeful and stuff because it's like keeping them responsible independent but habibi it's like you, 
breaking the relationships with your families is the worst thing you can do. The worst thing you can do. Allah Himself says that if you break this, you're basically cursed. You're basically cursed. And if you keep it, if you keep the relationships of the families, there's so much more blessings in it. Have you even freaking Andrew Tate talks about this, man? He's like, like if you have a brother, if you have a brother, like keep your relationship with the brother. Make him work with you. You know what? I should be doing that too, by the way. Just so you know, because he might be listening to me right now. <laughs> but anyway, but keep keep those keep those relationships. And especially like your mother. If you if you're like if you cut your relationship with your mother, I can even imagine someone cutting their relationship with their mother. But in the West, this is very common. Like a lot of people do that. And some people go to the to the extent of saying that my mother does not I don't owe her anything because she's the one that's, that decided to bring me out in this life and I don't really owe my mother anything. Habibi, that's, that's insanity. What are you saying? If my own son said that to me, I'll slap him, bro. Like, what the heck are you saying, man? Your mother, she, she held you in her womb for nine months. Don't even tell me she didn't decide to do it. It doesn't matter if, you, if she decided or not. She held you in the womb for nine months and then after that, she had to stay for like, I don't even know, 40 days or something with, with pain and stuff. On top of that, she came in and she fed you so much. She made sure that you're still alive. Because by the way, like for a mother, it's kind of, it's not like the easiest thing to do to take care of a child. But it's like it's almost like they're, they're programmed. They're literally programmed without even getting practice. They're just programmed to go and take care of this child. And so imagine you're helping this child grow up all these years. And then you're being so kind to them and all that stuff. Even if your mom is horrible, it doesn't matter. You're, you're keeping them alive giving them shelter and all that, everything and then they comes they come to a point where they're just like i don't owe you anything you're the one that decided to do this to me why, why do i owe you things that's such a horrible thing to do so the relationships of the wombs like your family don't ever break them allah has put you in a specific family for a reason and if your family is like abusive abusive it, that's the life you've been given it's like these are the cards you've been dealt with so learn how to deal with them and I'm not saying it's like if they're like so abusive, go back and live with them and all that stuff. Obviously, you have to have like your own <laughs> safety, right? So like I'm just saying don't break the relationship with them. Your family should be the thing that you're the most patient with. You know, people are actually, people are nicer to the waitress than their own mother and father and siblings. Can you imagine that, right? They're nicer to the waitress or the cashier than their own family. That's insane, bro. That's actually insane. And this is something that's keeping you broke. If you have no money right now, trust me, trust me, this is a big, it's a big thing that's keeping you broke because it's haram. Breaking this relationship with the families is haram. Also, the last point right now, the last point that's keeping you haram, that's keeping you not haram, but keeping you broke. <laughs> but it's a haram thing that a lot of you guys are doing. And listen, 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 don't even come here. This is before I even say the point. Don't even come here and tell me, no, but bro, it's okay. It's okay. It doesn't matter. It's not that haram. So it's okay. It's not. So, music, bro, music, man. Music is haram, bro. It, like, don't come here and tell me it's like, no, 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 but it's not haram. Trust me, it's haram. Trust me, bro. Now, my sheikh actually told me, my sheikh, right? Because I have I have two sheikhs. One of them came and told me, he's like, Hamad, because my name is Hamad. He's like, Hamoudi, listen. Sure, the music is haram, right? But not all of it is haram. I was like, Sheikh, what do you mean? He's like, listen, listen, Hamid. <laughs> Not all of it is haram. So, for example, if I'm sitting right now and I'm like doing, doing this, right? And like I make like a like a rhythm out of it. That's not haram, just so you know. Because this is like, you could say it's like man-made. But then, when you see these songs, all the mainstream songs, bro. They have, first of all, the 440 hertz frequency, which is the devilish frequency. So, right off the bat, it's haram because of that frequency. But the other thing, too, is that it's made from like... Things that are not even natural. Things that are not even natural. And the things that the, the words they're saying, it's bro, take the music away and just listen to the a cappella, just with the words. Tell me that's not tell me that that's halal. Just the words, just the words, and tell me if that's halal. Now, obviously, I'm not talking about all songs, by the way, because if you do listen to like old school songs from like back in the day, even like the love songs back in the day, and you're listening to them, and then all of a sudden, like you're looking at your wife and you're like, dang, this girl is so beautiful, and it's making you love your wife even more. Sure, sure. That's not haram. Okay, I get it. But then when you look at the songs nowadays, any mainstream song, Taylor Swift. Bro, who, who made that girl famous, bro? There's so many Taylor Swifts out there. Why didn't they become famous? 
why is it just this specific one all of a sudden became famous? Because that girl is like freaking being possessed by shaitan and going around. Bro, just don't. All these people, bro. All these people. These people, first of all, they don't have your best interest in their hearts. They don't care about you. All they care about is just, Habibi, look at me. Look at me. Just give me attention. Make me mainstream. Make me get the best attention on this, on, on every single country. These people are not, they don't love you, bro. They, they don't love you. And then when you're listening to their music and you're like, oh, bro, their music is, is just so good, bro. If you think their music is good, there's something wrong with you. And the sad thing about it is that 90% of people, there's something wrong with them. Trust me, bro. And when people look at me and they're like, you don't even listen to music? No, I don't. Alhamdulillah, I don't. They think there's something wrong with me. I'm like, no, bro. If you, if you think about it, you are the one that's addicted. So once you stop listening to the music, now you'll think it's like, dang, bro. So the whole time there was something wrong with me because I was listening to, to the music. Now I think there's something wrong with the people that listen, to, that listen to the music. So trust me, when you stop listening to the music, first of all, it's almost like, it's almost like you'll, first of all, give your brain time to heal. That's the first thing. And you'll notice that there's actually something on the other side. There's more peace on the other side. Again, bro, I used to be addicted to music. Trust me, I used to be addicted to it. But as soon as I stopped it, I deleted everything from my phone. You actually feel like, you literally feel like, You've gone back to your true self. And I don't know how to I don't know how to put words to, to describe you this whole feeling. It's just that when you stop it, you'll notice that dang bro, like this is my normal self. I don't have thoughts that are unoriginal, thoughts coming from other chodes. It's just my own thoughts, and that's it. And that's a beautiful state to be in. You'll notice also that like even even depression. So, you know, even depression, it becomes so easy, bro. It becomes so easy not to be depressed. Energy, too. It becomes so easy to just spawn energy out of nowhere. Clarity. Clarity, bro. You look at things as they are. You won't be coloring things. The past that you've lived, it won't come and start haunting you. And that's a beautiful thing to be in because most of the time when I used to listen to music, I used to, like, look at things, right? Just looking at normal things, like a freaking building. You see there is a building right there, right? Looking at a building, by the way, because this is a, it's, it's, it's like reflective. But you look at a building and it would remind you of things in the past and you would start feeling sad. What are you feeling sad about, bro? It's just a freaking building. It's just bricks or whatever steel making you sad. Are you being serious? <laughs> Especially as a guy, bro. Like imagine as a guy, you're looking at things and you're remembering like your ex or something. You're remembering like the good times back in the day. When I was listening to this exact music and all that stuff, and you start getting depressed all of a sudden, are you being serious, bro? Like, come on, man. <laughs> Trust me, bro. Once you stop listening to the music, there is a lot of good things on the other side. Even like try to talk to someone who listens to music twenty four seven, and talk to someone who's going raw, who does not listen to music at all. <laughs> like, just see the difference between them. There is actually a big difference, bro. A big difference. For me, well, maybe because I don't listen to it, but I usually enjoy talking more to the person that does not listen to it than the person that's always 24-7, 24 freaking 7, bro, always listening to the music. Also, they, they're, they're, their tongue, bro, they just say bad words all the time. Listen, don't come here and tell me, hey, but you say the word freaking. I mean, my sheikh says the word freaking. It's not a bad word, man. But then you see these people, it's like their mouth is so dirty, bro. Their mouth is so dirty. It's like, I just think, I'm like, do you really kiss your mom with that mouth? I mean, I'm pretty sure you've broken the relationship with your mom at this point, too, when you're constantly listening to the music. But do you really kiss your mama with that mouth? It's actually insane, bro. And there, there is no, there's no blessings in it, man. And then once you stop it, once again, think about it this way, right? Like, you're, you're also giving your energy to the singer. You're giving your energy to this music. And then once you stop it, also, by the way, you do realize that life is a mirror, right? There's like a delay factor, but it's like a mirror. So your thoughts, they usually get reflected within this mirror. You see how this is a mirror? So if I do this right now, you can see like my, my hand coming in, right? So this is life and this is me, right? But there's like a delay. So when I do it, there's like a delay and then it comes out. Just so it's basically an analogy. So you use, you use your thoughts and feelings to affect this mirror, just so you know. So if you're always listening to music... 100% of the time, if when, when, once you give the life 
the delay period, there's always going to be something bad happening to you. Because when you're listening to the music, it has the, the devilish frequency, right? It has the, the bad, it brings to you the bad thoughts and the bad emotions. And then when you give it the delay factor, these things start happening. They start manifesting into your own life. So instead of you changing, because people are like, oh, my life is so bad. That's the reflection. Instead of you changing the reflection, changing the mirror, why don't you just change the one that's being reflected in the mirror, which is you. Change your thoughts, change your feelings. And the best way to do it is cut the music, bro. This music is controlling your thoughts, controlling your feelings. You're supposed to be the one in control of that because these are the seeds that you're planting to live the life that, you, that you're living right now. And so if you fix it, if you fix it, you'll start living the life that you actually want, not the life that those singers put upon you. The reason why they're mainstream, by the way, is because that's one way to create a life, just so you know. So these people, all these sheep that are listening to the music, they're creating their own life without even knowing it. But the people at the top, they know this. They know this. They know how the formula of the of life works. So they make these people more mainstream. And so as a result, you'll see the entire, the majority of people, they have horrible lives. They don't even want the life that they're living. And it goes back to the music, bro, because it's the seeds. It's the seeds. Whenever I talk, whenever I say this stuff to people, they're always like, you don't know what you're talking about. Music helps me through depression, all that stuff, blah, blah, blah. Music is the thing that's giving you the depression, just so you know. Just so you know. And then once you stop it, once you stop it, you'll still be getting the depression, obviously, right? But live through it. See why there is the depression in the first place. Live through it. Be aware of it. Experience it for a little bit. Pain is not bad. Just experience it for a little bit. And you'll see there's so much light on the other side. So these were five things that are keeping you broke, bro. And if you fix those five things, once you fix them, come back to me. Come back to this video and tell me what happens. Just come back to me and let me know. Don't even believe me, bro. Just do it and come back to me and just let me know, okay? I hope this video was helpful. If it was, man, just let me know again. <laughs>